Hello everybody. Um, we talked about updating and managing button states and uh, toolbar states and menu item states because I see that people are still doing uh, single procedure updates in their forms. So they have a single procedure that updates the states of all the different you know, buttons and menu items and whatnot. And uh, that was the way to do it uh, a long time ago. But Delphi actually has, um, what can we call it, a, a hidden gem for this. It's something that has been unique to Delphi for many, many, many years. Uh, I think it was, uh, it couldn't be more than four years ago that uh, alternative languages uh, picked up on this and started to implement it. Because this has been unique to Delphi for so long. And it's uh, simply called action objects. So I'm going to show you uh, just how simple it is to avoid having a massive update procedure in your forms. So let's start with an action manager. Actually, we can do a list manager. That's for the other stuff. Let's see. Okay, so we have a list. And then we're going to go over and give it a name. We can just call it AC first, for example. And first up, oops, op Dion. There we go, first option. And uh, let's add some code that should execute whenever this action fires. So just double click on it. And we can do a show message. Oops. Uh, you clicked me. That's good. So whenever I assign this action to a button, then this code will fire. I think everybody knows that. But there's another event as well called on update. And this one fires whenever the... Uh, actually, it runs continuously in the background because whenever the application has some spare time, it will run all the on update uh, event handlers uh, for the active form, which is quite powerful. Uh, you can also place uh, action lists on your data modules uh, if you want actions that actually span globally. But let's uh, let's have something to test against. So I'm just going to do ftemp integer. Uh, and then we're going to write some update code. Right, we want to avoid uh, the update code executing if the application is terminating, because it can actually happen, especially if you have uh, a form that has, you know, a ton of components, and there's a lot of things going on. And suddenly the user just, you know, terminates the application. Uh, it can happen while uh, the logic is being uh, being executed. So we're just going to test if not CS destroying in component states, then, and then we're just going to cast the sender, which is always an action object, T action sender, enable equals F temp is less than one. So as long as this criteria is met, this action will be enabled. So let's uh, add a button. And then we're going to add a toolbar. As so, oops, that was a bit big. And we're also going to add T main menu just for fun. And now we're going to assign the action object to the first menu option. We are going to do the same for the button. And uh, we are going to add the toolbar item as well. Assign the action. Let's make this a list, I think. Let's see, list and show 
captions. There we go. So now we have one action object and it's been assigned to several different different elements. And now I'm going to add another button and I'm simply going to do I'm, I'm going to do this the old way and just uh, toggle. Uh, if f temp is larger than zero, then decrease f temp. Else, increase f temp. So that will toggle back and forth between one and zero, like so. Okay. Press play on tape. There we go. So now everything is assigned. So we have written one piece of code and we have assigned it to three different elements instead of having the same code copied three times and whenever we toggle this we can disable it and we can enable it it toggles between those states and it does that because of the logic in the update method or the update event handler so it's so much easier to maintain this. It's so much easier to expand it. Uh, you can imagine if you're making a project and then somebody else comes along and inherits that or buys that project from you. Uh, and if you have this massive procedure with uh, which, which takes care of, let's say, 100 buttons and uh, an equal number of menu items, you know, it, it is a nightmare to maintain an update. But if it's all done using action objects, Obviously, it's a time saver, and uh, also you don't have to duplicate your code all the time. You can have the code neatly isolated in one place. So that's pretty cool. So let's have a look at something else too, because when you buy component packages, some of the component packages will have standard actions that are pre made for you that you can simply drop into. You simply assign, you know, the buttons, you create the user interface you want. And then you can assign predefined action objects. For example, Imagen ships with a ton of these. Now I have a lot of component packages installed. So uh, let's say a new standard action. So it can take a little while before the list is complete because it has to go through all the packages and enumerate them. So here we can see Imagen, Imagen and IO. There's different components that has have different standard actions that you can simply create on the fly. So this is a pretty powerful system and I, it's strange that so so many still haven't noticed it because this is one of the, one of the unique things about Delphi that makes it so simple to, to write uh, efficient code. Code that is easy to maintain, it's easy to expand you can even uh, you can even create your own action objects if you like. It's a normal class. You can inherit from it. You can implement the properties you need, as long as it supports you know the the, the basic functionality exit uh, exit code and uh, execution code and the properties. You can do whatever you like. But visually, directly from the designer, I'm sure you can agree that this is so much easier than having to write. Uh, procedure T form one update all controls or update states. So yeah, well, that was just a, just a quick tour of T actions, and uh, I hope somebody picked up uh, something from this. Okay, have a good weekend. Cheers.